One of my favorite things to do with technology is make money. And by that, of course, I'm talking about gambling money. The information in here is worth millions, and I'm giving it to you. Well, that's very nice. Thank you very much. Now, why don't you make like a tree and get out of here? Several months ago, Google released a machine learning pipeline for their popular data warehouse, BigQuery. In today's video, you'll learn about SQL, machine learning, and cloud infrastructure, with the end goal of building a predictive model that will help you determine the outcome of horse races. If you're new to the channel, like and subscribe, and you can find a full walkthrough on Fireship.io. Now, I don't mean to disappoint you, but you probably won't get rich betting on horses. But by the end of this video, you will know how to upload your data to BigQuery and then run machine learning models against it without needing to be a data scientist. And the model we'll build will have predictive value, but horse racing is still very random. So use this at your own risk. First of all, what is BigQuery and why would you want to use it? It is a serverless data warehouse that allows you to store massive amounts of data and then query that data with standard SQL statements. It provides a centralized place to put all of your data, which might include things like Firestore, Excel spreadsheets, legacy databases, etc. Then you can make queries against this data to use it for combined reporting, and as we'll see later in the video, for machine learning. Just keep in mind it's not a production database, so you wouldn't use it in your front-end applications. For that, you would use something like Firestore or a regular SQL database. To get started, you just need to have a Google Cloud Platform or Firebase project. Then you can find BigQuery under the Big Data panel, and then I recommend pinning it to the top just so it's easy to access on the console. Now, BigQuery is designed to scale to huge amounts of data, and by huge, I mean petabytes of data. So when you make a query, it will queue that up as a job in the background. But before we can get to that point, we need to upload some data to BigQuery. There are many different ways to do this, but we're just going to upload a CSV file to cloud storage and then connect it as a table to BigQuery. We're going to grab our horse racing data from a site called Kaggle. It's a platform that allows companies to host their own data science competitions and also provides a large number of free data sets that we can use. Most importantly, they have this Horses for Courses data set, which contains about 250,000 rows of horse racing samples. Go ahead and download the horses.csv file that you find on this page. Now, like a lot of data sets, it's not perfect. And one thing I noticed is that this data set has mismatched data types, which causes errors when it goes into BigQuery. Just like a regular SQL database, BigQuery has a strict schema, which means we can't have mismatched data types in our columns. We could fix this by writing some Python code, or we could just open it up in Excel and format the number columns as numbers. Now that our data is properly formatted, the next step is to upload it to a cloud storage bucket. Go to the storage tab on GCP, and then you can create a new bucket or use an existing bucket if you have one. Then we'll upload the horse's CSV file, which is about 180 megabytes. If you have a file that's less than 10 megabytes, you can skip this step and just upload it directly to BigQuery. Now getting back to BigQuery, the first thing we'll do is click on the Add Data button and then Create New Data Set. Give your data set a name and then you can just select the default options here. A data set is just a collection of tables, which again you can just think of as SQL tables. Go ahead and click the Create Table button and we'll connect the file that we just uploaded to the cloud storage bucket. Now normally with SQL, you would have to define your schema manually, which of course we don't have for this data set. There's at least 50 different features or columns on that horse's spreadsheet, and it would really suck if we had to go through and define that schema manually. Luckily, BigQuery has this thing called Schema Auto Detect, which will randomly sample some of the rows and try to infer their data type. So make sure you have that selected. Then we'll want to make sure that it skips the header row, and we can do that by setting the skip header rows to 1. After that, you can click Create Table, and that will queue up a job in the background to create this table. You can monitor the progress of the job, which should only take a couple of seconds in this case, and it will also report any errors if it fails to upload the table. If everything worked, you should have a table that looks like this, where the field names match the header row of the CSV file. You can look at the schema, and you can also preview the actual values in the table here as well. The next thing we'll do is make an actual SQL query against this data set. We can do this directly in the console, but keep in mind you could also do this from the command line or with one of the client libraries. First, we'll click on Create Table to set up some of the boilerplate code, and we'll start the query with a select statement, which will select specific fields from the table. In this particular data set, it is the position value that we're trying to predict. That is the result that a horse took in a given race, so zero would be a scratch or a non-place, first would be the winner, second would be the runner-up, and so on. We'll also select the horse's sex and age from this table so we can see if that has any relationship to the position. We also want to make sure that sex is not null, of course, and we'll limit it to 10,000 records just to make it easier to work with in Data Studio. We can go ahead and run this query and it will run a job in the background. That will provide us with a new table with the queried results. Now there's a lot more we could get into with SQL queries like joining multiple tables together and things like that. But when it comes to machine learning, the first thing you generally want to do is explore your data. And BigQuery makes this really easy because it's integrated with another service called Data Studio. 
By clicking on export, we can transfer this data to Data Studio and do a visual analysis on it. Basically, we're taking the query that we just created and visualizing it. Everything in Data Studio is just point and click or drag and drop. And what I'm doing here is creating a bar chart to see if the sex of the horse has any relationship to its position in the races. And what we can see here is that colts and fillies have a higher chance of positioning well in a race. That means this field is probably a useful feature to include in our machine learning model. Now we could train our model directly from the BigQuery console, but I want to show you a really cool tool called Datalab. When I work on machine learning problems, I like to use Python notebooks, and Datalab basically gives you a Python notebook with unlimited computing resources. To set up a Datalab, the first thing we'll do is activate a shell session, then run Datalab create, followed by whatever name you want to give it. Then it's going to ask you to select a region, then it will take you through the steps to set up an SSH tunnel. And that's just a way for you to access a Python notebook that's connected to your cloud resources in the browser. That'll take a few minutes to set up, but once it's complete, you can go to the Compute Engine tab, and you'll be able to see the actual virtual machine that it created. Keep in mind that virtual machines accrue cost, so you'll want to shut this down after you're done with this tutorial. Once it's done, go ahead and click on the Web Preview button, and then select Change Port. It runs on port 8081, so go ahead and click Change and Preview, and you should be good to go. Now you have this playground for all your data analysis and processing needs, and it's already wired up with your data from BigQuery. And even though we're in a Python environment, we're only going to be writing a tiny bit of Python code. The cool thing about notebooks is that you can run code on a cell-by-cell -cell basis. If you're not already familiar with them, I recommend checking out some of the examples and running the code just to get a feel for how it works. Now I'm starting from a new notebook, and I first want to make sure that we have access to our BigQuery table. We use the bq command and call tables list, and that should list out the table that you have in BigQuery. And you can also use the help command just to list out all of the commands available on the bq namespace. Now that we know the name of our table, let's go ahead and make a query against it in this Python notebook. We use the bq query command, and then we can just write a standard SQL statement. We can go ahead and click play, then it should take a second to run, and then output the result of that query in the notebook. And we finally reach the point where BigQuery ML comes into play. We're going to write a special SQL statement that makes a query while at the same time creating a machine learning model based on that data. We use the create or replace model statement and then give it a name of ML model. And it can live in the same data set as our horses table. From here we can pass in a variety of different options. And first we'll set the model type to logistic regression. In machine learning this is a classification problem because we're trying to predict a specific label which is either first place, second place, third, and so on. The other option is linear regression, which you would use if you have a continuous value, for example, the measurement of length, which could have any infinite number of values depending on how precise you go. And confusingly, because we have a classification problem, we use the logistic regression model type. The next thing we need to do is tell it what our input label is, or in other words, the thing we're trying to predict, which is the position field. Once we have the options defined, we can just make a query to our table using select and from. And BigQuery will automatically do all of the machine learning stuff under the hood, like separate your data into a training and validation set. It will choose the hyperparameters for the algorithm, and it will run multiple training iterations based on what it thinks is best. That'll take a minute, and then if we go back to the BigQuery console, you can see that we now have our machine learning model in our data set. The next thing we need to do is determine if our machine learning model is any good. We'll run another query. This time we'll select all the fields from the model and then we'll run ml.evaluate. And we'll point it to the ML model in our data set. Then from inside here, we can make a query to the actual horse's data and evaluate it based on that model. This is going to print out a variety of different metrics, but the one we're concerned about is log loss. That's the value that we're trying to minimize. You can also keep an eye on the area under the curve. It's currently at 0.5, which means our model is completely random, or in other words, completely worthless. How do we make this model better? Well, in our case, we're only using the sex and the age of the horse to determine the outcome. There's a lot more data in this data set, so let's go ahead and feed that into the machine learning model to see if we get better results. So I'm selecting a bunch of other fields like the handicap weight, penalty, barrier, and stuff like that. If we have high quality data, then these fields should increase the predictive value of the model. When we retrain and reevaluate the model, you can see the log loss now decreases to 0.29 and the area under the curve increases to 0.7. Now we have a model that we should be able to take to the racetrack to make an unlimited amount of money. Now we can make predictions on new data by using the ML predict statement. You would use this one by creating a new table with some new data that you acquired at the racetrack. Using a similar schema, you would feed it into this machine learning model and it would give you predictions on that new data. In this example here, I'm just randomly sampling 10 items from our existing data set. And you can see the result of that query is a prediction for the position of the horse in that race. I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up there. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe. And if you want access to even more content, consider becoming a pro member at Fireship.io. Thanks for watching, and I will talk to you soon.
All you gotta do is bet on the winner and you'll never lose.